So before starting this video, I wanted to put in a little disclaimer. So this engine, the MTH Berkshire, I actually bought it a little over a year ago. And so what I decided to do, as you will see, I wanted to do a mystery unboxing. And so I did that and I went ahead and started recording, talking about all the features of the engine. And then when I went to go run the engine for the running session, I couldn't get the engine to move for whatever reason. So I thought something was wrong with it. I had the talking session recorded, but I didn't have the running session done. So I kind of put this project on the back burner, put the engine on a shelf and let it sit there for about a year. And then finally I found someone who would take a look at it. And when they looked at it, they found there was nothing wrong with it. They were able to add it into their DCS system and uh, they found it no problem. I went ahead and deleted the engine, brought the engine back to the layout and deleted the engine from the remote, the DCS remote. I added it again and sure enough, the engine ran great. So this is, this is an engine that is brand new, but I've actually had for a little over a year. So I'm really excited that I was able to finally get this going. So as the disclaimer, there are a couple of things in the video that you'll see that aren't necessarily true. One is that I mentioned that this is my first steam engine review for this channel. Uh, at the time, that was true when I made the recording. But now, if you guys, for those of you who've been following me, you know that I've done a couple of steam engine reviews on this channel. So that's, that part is not true. Then I also mentioned that MTH was closing. Well, we all know that MTH is not, in fact, closing. So that part is not true. And then, of course, I try to make it a mystery unboxing, and you guys, of course, will know what is inside the box. So just remember those couple of things as you watch this video. Hope you guys enjoy. I thought it'd be fun to do a, uh, another what did I get video. So I got this package from Mario's Trains a couple weeks ago, and I figured I would open it up in front of you guys and show you what I got. So I got uh, the CSX uh, coil car. I'm trying to diversify my collection of rolling stock. So I thought it'd be fun to get the uh, CSX uh, coil car. That's number one. Here's the big item. Read that the plastic. This is the 284 uh, Berkshire in the nickel plate road scheme. Okay, I took the carton out of the box just to save some time for the video. This is a big engine. It's a 
Big engine. Tender. So we'll go ahead and put it on the tracks and um, we'll talk a little bit more about it. So this is my first review of a steam engine uh, on this channel. On my old channel I did a couple of steam engine reviews uh, of engines that I have. Um, but this is my first steam engine review for this channel. This is MTH's premier uh, locomotive. Uh, this came from their 2020 volume two catalog from last year. It was their last catalog. And I ordered this engine because I knew MTH was closing and I wanted to get one last MTH steam engine for my collection. You know, I'm not a nickel plate road uh, collector, but I wanted one last um, steam engine. So uh, a little bit of history, the Nickel Plate Road acquired 80 Berkshires between 1934 and 1949. Alco built the first 15 in 1934. And then eight years later, Lima built the last 65 uh, locomotives. They were series uh, S1 through S3 class between 1942 and 1949. Of all these 80 locomotives, six were preserved, including uh, Lima's last steam locomotive, the 779, which is located in uh, uh, Lima, uh, Ohio. Um, even though the number 765 is the most famous locomotive because it's uh, still uh, running on excursions, the uh, 763, which is this one, was Nickel Plate Road's one of their best running locomotives and this engine is uh, was preserved and is not in running condition but it sits at the age of steam roundhouse in uh, Sugar Creek Ohio MTH has been making these loco these um, nickel plate road Berkshires for years uh, going all the way back to uh, Proto 1 the weight of the locomotive is 8 pounds, 5 ounces. The tender is 4 pounds, giving a total weight of 12 pounds, 5 ounces. And the length is 26 and a half inches, coupler to coupler. I just love the uh, detail of this engine. Um, it has a number of separate grab irons, grab bars, uh, separately applied hoses. It's got the nice white trim running down the side of the locomotive. Uh, the drivers uh, have the white wall rims around the outside, which is a nice touch. Uh, the front of the locomotive has a nice uh, Mars light and headlight, uh, which are very bright, which you'll see in the, uh, in the running session. Both the rear, the cab windows uh, on, on either side uh, open individually, which is a really nice touch. Uh, there is a builder's plate showing uh, Lima's uh, uh, locomotive uh, builder's plate. I love the uh, flickering firebox. The um, coal load in the tender is real. It's not molded in plastic. Uh, that's another nice uh, added touch. Um, and I like the marker lights on the back of the tender. There are also uh, real ch real real chains hanging from the front and rear of the uh, tender trucks. Um, and one thing that really surprised me about this locomotive was that there is a wire running between the cab and the whistle that simulates the cord connecting the cab to the uh, whistle. I think that's a really nice uh, added detail and it's separately applied. 
So in the back of the tender, there is a master smoke on and off uh, knob and a master volume uh, knob that you can control manually. Um, the smoke on this engine is excellent. Of, of course, that's typical MTH. They have great smoke units. The only thing that's the least favorite part of uh, this locomotive is the drawbar. Um, I always have an issue with um, MTH's uh, drawbars. Uh, it's it's kind of difficult to connect the tender to the engine. You have to push the, there's a silver rod, if you can uh, look at this picture here. There's a silver rod that you have to actually push to the side so that it pushes up against the pin that's on the, um, that goes into the hole on the drawbar, the pin that's on the tender. So you have to push the rod to the side, insert the pin into the hole on the drawbar. Then once you have that connected, then you have to push, you have to reach underneath and push the drawbar up to connect the uh, six pin connector, the male female connector. Um, so it takes, it takes a little bit of practice to, um, to, to, to get that, um, and it's a little bit uh, cumbersome to do. That's really my biggest drawback uh, with this locomotive. So all in all, um, I really like this engine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a short running session so you guys can see it in action. So uh, enjoy. Jake. 